It's crazy that if the Bible is real, most Christians are going to hell. Uh huh. Most people who follow the Bible will just skip over this Bible verse entirely, or they'll purposefully misinterpret it. And I'm not religious in any way, but. And today we're talking about Hebrews 10, 26 through 10, 27. And I look through the different versions of the Bible and they all say the same thing basically for this with slightly different wording. Did you by any chance you know, read the whole book or at least the chapter? No? Okay, well, let's see it. And it says, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. So that means if you're a follower of the Bible and you do something that you know is a sin, then the sacrifice that Christ made for you no longer applies to you and you're no longer forgiven. And instead of that forgiveness, now there's only a fearful expectation of judgment and raging fire. You're saying that you're going to go to hell. If you deliberately sin after you know something's a sin, you'll go to hell and you're now an enemy of God. In order to understand Hebrews 10, 26 through 27, you have to first understand how this argument fits within the greater context of the whole chapter. Hebrews 10 is a part of a larger discourse on the superiority of Christ's sacrifice over the Old Testament sacrificial system. The author has been contrasting the temporary repetitive sacrifices under the Mosaic law with the once and for all sacrifice of Christ. So here's the key point. Under the old system, Animal sacrifices could never truly take away your guilt. They were a shadow of the things to come, a temporary solution that pointed towards the final solution, Jesus Christ. For example, the author states in Hebrews 10.14, by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. This sets the stage for what we see in 26 and 27. What we're dealing with here is the concern of abandoning faith in the ultimate sacrifice. So let's look at the verses in question. At first glance, this might seem to say that any deliberate sin after becoming a Christian leads to losing salvation. But now let's slow down and analyze this within the context. Given the narratival structure of Hebrews, this is about turning away from your faith in Christ, not about ordinary moral failures as a Christian. In fact, again, this whole chapter is on the superiority of Christ over these Old Testament sacrifices and the danger of rejecting that truth. Even just a careful reading of these texts in isolation should tell you this. Look at verse 26. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, we're violating something we've learned. We came to a particular knowledge, and that's what's being violated. I wonder what that could be. Just keep reading. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. So it seems like if we reject this point of knowledge, there's no other sacrifice left for us. Now, what is this point of knowledge? It's exactly what we've been talking about and what the author of Hebrews talks about, the knowledge of the gospel. If we reject this knowledge, the sacrifice of Christ, there is no other sacrifice to save us. And just to back this up, all over the New Testament, we see that our faith is not based on works. It's based on faith in Jesus. And the entire book of Hebrews is about faith. It's not about achieving moral perfection. I mean, look at Hebrews 7, 11. Think about it. That which you couldn't achieve through moral perfection, salvation, can't be lost by moral imperfection. That's not what this passage is talking about at all. The point is that the old system couldn't make us perfect. Only Christ can. And I think the fatal flaw in this creator's reasoning is that he thinks that the rhetorical target of the book of Hebrews was him or us today. So instead of reading these passages idiosyncratically, we should understand that the rhetorical target of the book of Hebrews were Jewish Christians that were probably facing pressure to go back to the old system and facing pressure to reject the gospel after coming to knowledge of it. How do we know that? Look at verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. This is the core message of Hebrews 10. It's not about sinning your way out of salvation. It's about holding fast to your faith in Christ. This entire book is urging believers to stay in the faith despite temptations to apostatize. So not only does the author prelude 26 and 27 with that, he also continues on in verse 35 and says, Therefore, and that therefore is very important because that tells us that whatever he's about to say is in light of what he previously said. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward. Our confidence is our faith in Jesus Christ, who finished the work. Again, 
the encouragement is to stay in the faith and not throw away your faith that you have in Jesus. So no, this is not telling us that 99% of Christians are not going to heaven. 